In this lesson, I'll show you how to perform the Kruskal Wallace procedure. Before we start answering the question that I've prepared, let's discuss what this is. The Kruskal Wallace test is the procedure used for data that is not normally distributed and that follows the analysis of variance. To use the Kruskal Wallace technique, you combine the observations of the various groups, much the same way we did with the Wilcoxon rank sum test, and you assign ranks. The ranks are then summed in each of the groups, and the test statistic is computed, so the ANOVA is completed based on ranks instead of measurements. The test statistic looks like this. It's chi-square. Let's read the question. Suppose we wish to compare four treatments for seasonal allergies. A total of 20 subjects agree to participate in the investigation and are randomly assigned to one of the four competing treatments. After following the prescribed treatment regimen for two weeks, we assess the subjects status. And that's outlined in this table. The outcome variable in this application is an index score based on three distinct symptoms. At the end of the treatment, subjects are asked if they are currently experiencing any of the following symptoms, scratchy throat, itchy eyes, and runny nose. Each subject responds yes or no to each of the three symptoms. The index score is the sum of affirmative responses. The range of scores is zero for no symptoms and three, all three symptoms. Is there a significant difference among the treatments with respect to symptom scores? As always, the first thing that we have to do is write down our hypothesis. And just like the ANOVA test, the null hypothesis will be that all of the means are equal. Whereas the alternative is that at least two means differ. And in this case, mu represents the mean rank for each of the treatments. Now that we have that out of the way, your next step is to pool all this data together and rank it from lowest to highest. As you can see, the lowest values are zero. We have one, two, three, four zeros. We can't say that this is first, second, third, or fourth. They all share a score of zero. So what we do is we add up one, two, three, and four. One plus two plus three plus four and we divide it by the number of observations. The top is equal to 10 divided by four is 2.5. So instead of writing one, two, three, and four, they will all have a rank of 2.5. The next lowest score is one. That one, this one, and these two. We can't say that this is five, six, seven, and eight. Instead, we will add those five plus six plus seven plus eight and divide by four. Seven plus eight is 15 plus five is 20 plus six is 26 divided by four should give you 6.5. So I'll write down a rank of 6.5, 6.5, 6.5 and 6.5. Let's continue with two, those that score two. I'll call this nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have to add up all of these values and we divide by one, two, three, four, five, six. I get 11.5. Lastly, the threes, if you do that the same way, you will get a rank of 17.5. Let me record that for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the test statistic and understand these variables. The top part is the sum of squares. The top variable is calculated using this formula. And this formula contains n, which is the total number of observations for any particular level. That represents the mean for each of the treatments. And that represents the total mean. We need to calculate those. So let's find the average of each treatment for this treatment, we will call it R bar, and it's treatment one dot. This one is R bar sub two dot, the average for that group and the average for this group. We add these up and divide by five. You'll end up with 8.1, 13.9, 4.9, and 15.1. The total sum, if we add all these ranks and divide by 20, will give you a value of 10.5. So now, to calculate 
this value. I'll write down 5 times 8.1 minus the total average, 10.5, and raise that to the power of 2. And I keep doing this for each group. If you multiply and add these correctly, you should end up with an SSB value that is equal to 349.2. Okay, so we have the numerator. Now we focus on the denominator, SS rank. We will take each rank and subtract it by the mean. So we had a rank of 2.5. 2.5 minus the mean of 10.5, and we square that. Plus, since we had four 2.5s, instead of writing this out three more times, I'll just multiply it by four. Plus, the next rank was 6.5, and there were four of those as well. 6.5 minus 10.5 raised to the power of two. The next rank was 11.5, and six of those existed plus the last rank was 17.5 and there were six of those. Now if you put this into your calculator, you will end up with 620. We have everything we need to calculate chi-square. So I'll take 349.2, 349.2 over the value that we just found, 620, and we divide it by n minus 1. n is equal to the number of observations, which is 20, minus 1 makes 19. So the chi-square value is equal to 10.7. This is the observational value that we'll be comparing to the critical, which we'll obtain from a table. Using a degrees of freedom of k minus 1, where k represents the number of treatments. We have a degrees of freedom of 3, and with a degrees of freedom of 3, you should end up with a chi-square critical value that's 7.81. In a chart, that looks like this. 7.81 is right here. That's your chi-square critical. Our value falls in the rejection region. Our value is 10.7. This means that we have to reject the null hypothesis that all treatments are the same. So based on the Kruskal wallace test, we have sufficient evidence at 0.05 significance level to conclude at least two treatment mean symptom scores differ. In our next video, I'll show you how to figure out which of these treatment means do significantly differ, and we'll be using the Bonferroni approach to show that.